All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name's Tim, and I am creating a little special project for um, my bicycle. And what I'm going to do is I'm making a fishing rod holder um, that I'm going to attach to a bicycle trailer that I have for my mountain slash hybrid bike. It's currently January 21st, 2013, and it is about 12 degrees outside with a wind chill of minus 6. Fortunately, the shop is heated. Now, let me show you what I've done with this um, so far. Basically, I've taken a 5-foot piece of Schedule 40, 1 and one half inch interior diameter PVC piping. I've cut them into 12-inch segments, roughly. Um, I've also notched it out, as you can see, um, so that the various rods and reels that I have uh, will slide down in. Um, the one with the really wide grip was designed more for this particular reel simply because of the way that it attaches on the side. There's not a lot of clearance. So unfortunately on that one, I had to make the tube cut out a little bit wider as demonstrated on these two that are in the center. The one on the right works really well. The one on the left here in the center, I still have to do a little cleanup and, and final fit for that. The other two fishing reels have just your standard spin casters. And that's pretty narrow up at the top there where it connects to the rod. So what I've done then is basically I've made these cutouts a little bit narrower for that. Now you're saying, why should I have four of these? Well, I'm hoping someday some friends will come with us. Um, my wife and I are just now getting back into fishing after several decades away from it. And this whole thing, and then you can see this piece of white starboard what i did was i just went to the store bought two of these real cheap cutting boards and then what i've done is i've cut them out and i'm going to make it so that it'll fit right here on the side of my bob ibex trailer now this trailer connects to the back side via the rear axles of my giant sedona bicycle so i've got a rack on the bike i've got this trailer that i can tow behind it and then when I have the trailer in tow behind, it'll carry up to 70 pounds. As you can see here, that's where it connects to the back axles. There is a tire and a little shock absorber, three positions back here. Carry up to 70 pounds of gear. And obviously to balance it on the back of my garage futon, I had to take the wheel off on that. So basically so far I've got well, several hours in here just tinkering around in the garage experimenting playing with this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dry fit here and here and then another one over to the side. If I figure if I use a three at a minimum a three point assembly then it shouldn't bounce around, um, shouldn't slide around on the trailer. I'm using um, horseshoe type clamps that'll go around the PVC pipes and mount flush to the to the white starboard there or the cutting board. And I'm also going to be mounting all of this on the exterior um, of the trailer. That way the tubes will sit out here. Yes, it's going to make it a little bit wider. But in reality, it won't be any wider with the trailer and everything than the handlebars on my bike. So if I'm traveling along a creek bed or something like that and have to go in between trees, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. If it is, I'll find a different path. Okay, and we've been uh, working on the bike all morning. And um, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Been cutting and priming and drilling neat holes and stuff. But we are finally to the point now where I think I can show you what's going to be pretty close to the final project on this or the completion of it. Okay. And there she is. That's the new fishing rod reel holder. As you can see, it kind of, they sit out. They trap back. I'm going to put another one just like it on the other side so we can carry up to four fishing poles. Again, this is mounted on my giant Sedona DX. Uh, just put some new street tires on it too just in case we wanted to uh, go down the road. There's a lake about 10 miles from us and um, it's a nice place to fish so I thought maybe I'd put some street tires on it so that I didn't just go brrrr the whole time on some knobbies. But anyway, the bike axle works good for the trailer. It just goes through either one of the set of rims that I have for this, either the aggressive off-road tires or these street and path tires. But again, here's the final product. You can see, and now I'm using a bungee cord system now just so that I can tie the rods down, um, put them in there, and then keep them from jumping out as we're going down the road. 
I have the three attachment points um, that you can see there. They're usually in the at the 12 o'clock, about the 8 and the 4 positions. Um, you can see all the nuts and bolts. I'll traverse around to the other side here, stepping underneath. And you can kind of see how I've mounted this in here. What I've done is just use some one and a half inch clamps, a uh, bunch of stainless, three quarter inch by one quarter, one quarter by three quarter inch long nuts and bolts. And yes, I'm going to leave the nuts and bolts on the outside because there's a dry bag that I have that fits down inside there. So I don't want any of that protruding into the inside. And I'll just use the nuts and bolts um, or just the bolt heads on the inside. Uh, they shouldn't have too much of an impact on the dry bag when we put it in there. Now, when we go fishing and stuff, we'll take a cooler, take a little live well bucket or something along with us, uh, a couple of chairs, you know, some some places or some of the fishing pole um, mounts that you can just pound down into the ground real quick. And we should have ourselves a pretty good time. I've got this set up here. These won't move back and forth. Um, the top one doesn't move at all with that wrap around it. This bottom one doesn't either. Um, as you can tell, I'm trying to... I'm just twisting, putting a pretty good amount of pressure on it. It takes quite a bit. The biggest thing on the angle with this was being able to keep the reel from hitting the, um, the frame of the trailer. And you can see where all the nuts and bolts and the attachment points are there. But yeah, I think this is work out, working out really well. Next thing I'm going to do is disassemble the whole thing. I will use the board that is on this side as a pattern. I will cut it out, I will drill it exactly the same, and I will mount another one over here. I've already prepped my two pieces of tubing for the other side. I'm going to leave the white board as a white board on the trailer, um, but the, um, the two rod holders here, I'm going to paint them a red color. I went to the hardware store and got some plastic paint for plastic, uh, and it's going to be a reddish color, so it should match up with the giant. And as there's some, you know, different silvers and things like that, like I said, I'm going to leave the board uh, that's mounted to the trailer white, but I am going to paint the tubes a red color. Also, I've got the um, rubberized material that you would drop, um, like your tool handles, if you wanted to put a rubberized coating on your pliers or something. And I am going to drop a little bit of that, um, the tubes anyway. Uh, the top side of the tubes where the reels sit, I'm going to dunk that in all the way up to the point where the, the rods and reels sit in the cutouts. And I'll do a little bit on the other end too, um, just, you know, so more protection when it's rocking and rolling inside those tubes. It'll have a rubberized finish, less chafing and scratching of the reels themselves. As you can tell, my one reel, my Shakespeare, uh, it's more of a trolling reel, it does stick out a little bit. But if I've got that set up right, it should be about flush with the bottom of the trailer. That way I don't have to worry about, you know, going up over a bump or something like that on a trail along a creek bed or something and, you know, ejecting the rod or, or doing any damage to it. But all in all, that's the end of the project, or not the end of the project, but that's the one side completed. And like I said, basically I'm just going to use this as a pattern. Um, to go on the other side, I've got another cutting board. I've got all the parts and pieces ready to go. Um, so again, I'll just disassemble everything now and, um, I'll put it all up. I'll mount it on the other side, put a couple more fishing poles in there, see what it looks like. And, um, one of the things I did do, and just in case you all are curious about that out in the world, is the angle at which the poles set. So as you can see, they do set back at quite a decent, oh, about a 45, maybe a 50 degree angle. And when I am sitting on the, the mountain bike and I'm pedaling, and when I have my helmet on, the tips of the rods, um, and the white one's just maybe an inch taller than the, the black Shakespeare or the uh, black ugly stick that you can't see there. But they're about the same height as I am when I'm pedaling. So again, if I'm offshore or off the, along the, the edges of a creek or something, I know that if I duck on my bike, I'm going to have to worry about the poles. The other thing I can do is obviously all these poles now break, a ha break apart in the center, pull apart rather, and then I can always just, you know, do that. Use a couple of bread ties or something similar to that, attach the two poles, and then reduce the height of that by half. So lots of options available, and that's the project so far. 
And I'll come back when it's all done and said and uh, show you how the rest of it turns out when she's all painted up and looking nice. Okay, and here we are. We've got it pretty much all set up. Got both sides mounted. Everything's looking good. I was going to paint the tubes today and dip them as I mentioned earlier. I think I'll come back and do that in the summer. Because um, it is the 21st of January and here in Central uh, North America it's getting mighty chilly out. But anyway, this is what she looks like. Now I did just stick a paint extender tube in there to go ahead and fill up the fourth uh, fishing rod as we don't currently own a fourth one. But there's my spin caster on my what, six, seven foot ugly stick. My wife's little four and a half, five foot ugly stick. I got her for Christmas last year. My big trolling rod. As you can see, depending on the way the handles are set up, I can either put them to the exterior, I can move them to the interior depends on what kind of a load I'm carrying I've got my tackle box I'll get past my thing here my tackle box is sitting right up front underneath the chairs tucked nicely in its little cubby I've got my little igloo cooler in there or playmate cooler rather sit sideways which allows my chairs to sit right on top I do have bungee cords that I can put over top of everything uh, as we showed you earlier, the bungee cord system to hold the rods in place. There's my wife's little, little ugly stick. Well, I tell you what, though, it comes in handy. It's only about four and a half, five feet long. And we did fish here a couple years ago for the first time and throwing it down under some deadfall along the banks of a, a lake, uh, like I said, about 10 miles from here. It turned out to be really good. Trailer's got the shock absorber on it. Helps reduce or take some of the load associated with it. Again, the fishing poles. They're about my height when I'm riding on top of the, when I'm riding on my bicycle. And that's what she looks like, fully loaded. I'll come around this way. A couple of chairs. All we need now is about some 70 degree weather. My God, we're going to be set and ready to roll. My wife just came in. Honey, would you do me a favor? Hold that for you? Yes, please. And then basically I want you to just to... This is what it will look like when we're actually on the machine. <laughs> so, as I said, the fishing rods and stuff are about the same size as my head when I'm just sitting on my bike pedaling down the road. I'll have the helmet on and such. And that'll give me that extra couple of inches that should be about the same size as the tallest rod in the back. By God, now we can go catch us some dinner. We don't have to waste a lot of fossil fuels. And we get a little exercise in the process. So, again, I'll paint everything up when it gets a little bit warmer because currently I've had enough of breathing kerosene fumes out of my turbo heater. And it's mighty cold today. So, thanks for watching and uh, I hope this inspires some other folks to do this as well. Have a great day.